Okay, so I am uh, Philippe Lognonnet. I am professor at University Paris Diderot and Institute of Physics du Globe, and, and I am the principal investigator of the SACE experiment on the NASA Insight mission to Mars. Okay, so thank you. It's a great pleasure to to be here and to let you share uh, the, excit uh, the excitation of uh, you know the future of seismology, part of the future of the seismology, of course. Uh, but also uh, some of the big uh, past uh, uh, achievement made on the moon. And uh, uh, so seismology is, uh, is known as a way to look inside the interior of the planet. And uh, we have to keep in mind that it is something which, was, uh, uh, which is rather new uh, in the sense that uh, if we take the Earth, you know, which is a big success story, we have today in seismology, the first observation of a seismic wave was made, uh, you know, uh, something like uh, 1,003, uh, one or 130 years old. Uh, and uh, so this was a quake, by the way, in Japan, uh, which was uh, recorded uh, in a post-dam. And it was recorded in Potsdam by an astronomer uh, who, are, who was developing a tilt meter to stabilize a telescope. So it was, a, it was not really a seismologist at that time, so it was an astronomer. But uh, I am very sorry that I don't think that Michel will discuss a lot on seismic wave on exoplanet. So we still to, to go there in order to catch the wave, uh, with some exception maybe. Okay, but what is very interesting is uh, very shortly after this first discovery of a quake, you know, a lot of discoveries were made on a uh, wave uh, bouncing on uh, what we call today the moho, so the, the discontinuity between the crust and uh, the mantle, and you see this was done uh, uh, only 10 years after the discovery of the first quake. Uh, and uh, then, uh, you know, Mohovici uh, uh, gave the name of this discontinuity in 1910. And then uh, Oldham in 1906 discovered uh, the, the fact that very deep, 2,800 kilometers deep, we have uh, liquid stuff. So it was, uh, you now we know that it is uh, iron. And this was a discover of the outer core. Uh, and uh, finally, in 1936, uh, the f last piece of the planet, the inner core, the solid inner core, was discovered by uh, Lehman. So you see, it took 50 years to discover everything. Uh, we say, of course, now we go to the details. This is one of the issues of uh, science, you know. You start from nothing, you do the first step very rapidly, and after you work a lot to go to the detail. So these details now are such that we, we know more and more the structure of the Earth, and we are able to map inside the Earth the temperature anomalies, which are associated to uh, uh, the convection of the planet. We see plumes, we see the topography of the inner core, we see the topography of all the discontinuities, and of course this is done by a huge seismic network on the planet. So we have 20,000 stations. Uh, and all of them, you know, are uh, today uh, provide data you can get immediately on internet. So, so therefore now we have to go to, to the other planet. So of course not with, with 20,000 stations. The first, therefore the first second success story was on the moon. This was not a scientific proposal. Uh, for the mission insight, I will show you later, you know, our final proposal was eight, 800 pages, so it was a big uh, stuff, you know. So this is the moon proposal, Apollo proposal, you know, it is a one page. It's very simple, you know. Uh, uh, you can turn it, there is no thing, you know. Of course, the guy who made that, you know, is uh, Kennedy, so you have some some, uh, you know, power when you request such a mission. And he was very kind because he gave uh, three weeks to the guys, you know, to study the mission. And this was made in uh, April 64. Uh, uh, so you have five questions, you know, 
for us scientists, we put a lot of detail in scientific questions, you know. Here, the first one is, do we have a chance of beating the Soviet? Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> the second question is, how much additional would it cost? The third question, are we working 24 hours a day and seven days a week, but this was obvious. Okay. And uh, five questions, are we making maximum effort? Are we achieving necessary results? You know, so this was very simple. And, uh, and the very nice thing is that uh, something like one month after it was the start of, of the Apollo program, uh, in the, uh, at the beginning of the 60s, you know, with the goal to, to send a man uh, to the moon uh, by the end of the 60s. And what is very interesting is that geophysics and Geochemistry was immediately put inside the program. It was put inside the program with the idea to put on the moon geophysical station, because this is what you know, we, we do on the Earth. And here you have uh, this geophysical station you know, uh, during training of, uh, oh, by the way, uh, how to, to, to start this? So ah, I had to, okay, so you, you did not make it. Okay, so, so in this session, you know, you have some more liberties than in the, in the other one, you know. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> so, and, uh, so this was the idea, you know. It, it must be said that, uh, in fact, in a very, it's a big surprise to, to see that, uh, you know, space exploration started in uh, 58, and uh, in uh, 61, uh, you already had uh, three projects, you know, the Ranger pro project, uh, which were supposed to, to launch uh, on the moon uh, this big ball. You know, this was made in balsa wood. And inside the balsa wood ball, you had a seismometer with a radio system to transmit seismic data on, on the moon. The three missions failed all in the same year. You know, they were launching at that time, you know, mission to the moon every four months, five months, you know. I would like to have the European Space Agency doing something like that, but it's more difficult today. Anyway, this was the start of geophysics and seismology on another planet, and you know that at the end, you know, uh, United States, they won uh, the race. Uh, and what is not completely known is that they really won the race at the last minute. You know, so this is a picture uh, taken in uh, 69, in July, you know, in Cap Canaveral, but this turned out to be a picture taken in Baikonur, you know, in March 69. And you see also a rocket, you know, ready to, to go to the moon, but they had big issue with this rocket uh, uh, on the Soviet side. So, now the mission started, okay, and uh, then uh, it landed. Okay, maybe, as you know, uh, maybe some of your students, you know, may ask you the question, is it really true that uh, people went to the moon? Okay, and you can tell them, okay, you know, now you can request a, a high imager uh, system, which is on board NASA. Of course, the problem is that m maybe NASA is making not the right picture, but anyway, if you believe that uh, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter is able to provide you uh, with high resolution image of the moon. So you see a lot of craters on this uh, place, but here you see a very funny one, you know, where the shadow is on the opposite direction. And this is uh, shown here. And uh, if uh, you, uh, you, you try to, to have a better look, you see also some uh, spot, light spot here, three spots. And in fact, it's turned out that this is nothing more than the Apollo 11 landing place. Uh, and this object is a seismometer, which was uh, put, you know, uh, among the first scientific uh, instrument on the moon by the NASA mission at that time. Here you had also a laser reflector. You later had a, a, a laser, and of course you had the flag to show that uh, NASA succeed in the mission. But this today is a huge amount of uh, scientific data. And uh, what is very interesting is that uh, uh, 40 years after, we are still using this data to make uh, scientific papers. 
you know that many scientists have the dream to publish a paper in science, uh, but a paper in science with the Apollo data were published uh, uh, five years ago with real discovery. So which means that something which was not seen on the data during 40 years and something which was detected by scientists uh, 40 years after with new way to process this data. And this was nothing more than the core of uh, the moon on which I will go later. So therefore this mission made, you know, they put a lot of uh, uh, sensors and Basically, they put seismometer on all these location, uh, 11, 12, 14, 16, 15. On 17, they put a, a, a gravimeter. They put a lot of laser reflector. They put magnetometer. They made also heat flow measurement. So they made all the geophysics, you know, you can imagine to be done on a planet. And here you add uh, uh, the instrument on the moon. What was discovered is that first there are a lot of quake on the moon. Uh, and this quake, you know, of course, uh, propagate wave. Uh, what you get on the moon is you, had, you have what we call deep moon quake. So the deep moon quake are related to the tide generated by the Earth. And this tide make very small uh, uh, quake with magnitude between minus one up to three. Uh, you have to keep in mind that, for example, the quake in Japan, the last one was almost magnitude 8. So between magnitude 3 and magnitude 8, so you have 5 magnitude and 1 magnitude is 1.5. So you have, you have a 7.5 order of magnitude. It's almost, uh, okay, so it's 30 million uh, times larger. So which means that this signal, you know, uh, the signal here are very small. Okay? If not, you know, on the Earth it will be very big, much bigger than it is already. So, and by the way, you know, this amplitude here is a two angstrom. So from there to here, you have two angstrom. From here to here, you know, you have four angstrom. And I recall you that the size of the atomic atom is a half an angstrom. So therefore, to give you the scale, this you can put 10 atoms of hydrogen between there and here. So it's a very small uh, signal. But nevertheless, you see that we were able to detect in the 70s this signal very well. Then uh, we have uh, a lot of, we have something like shallow uh, uh, moonquake. So they are located uh, near the crust in the first 100 kilometer depths. And uh, very few of them, you know, uh, were detected along the seven year of activities, uh, something like 30 shallow uh, moonquake. Uh, these guys, you know, the, 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 moon, the deep moonquake, we detected uh, more than uh, 8,000 of them. Uh, and very funny, they are repeating every month, you know, with the, on the same fault. So this is one of the few place, only place maybe in the solar system where seismology can predict an uh, earthquake. <clears throat> and definitely not on the Earth. Uh, and last but not least, you know, a lot of impact were uh, detected impact generated by uh, a meteorite uh, hitting the, the lunar surface just because there is no atmosphere and therefore they are not burning in the atmosphere when they entry with high velocity. So now, this is what we know from the moon, from all this data. So we, we know that we have a, a crust of the order of 40, 50 kilometers thick. Then we have a mantle, but this mantle is very close from what we call the lithosphere on the Earth, so which means it is relatively cold. Uh, but at depths of something like 1,000 kilometers, maybe we have some partial melting. And very interesting is that we have a small core uh, of the order of 350 kilometers in radius. Uh, we know the core is liquid because this core is made, making some uh, uh, damping on the rotation of the moon and it is also reflecting wave uh, from, the, the, from the top. So deep moon quake, uh, uh, seismic wave are bouncing on the, on the core going up and can be detected uh, with a seismometer. Maybe there is an inner core, but that inner core is not yet discovered 
or detected by any of the existing data. This will be one of the goals of the future mission. Okay, now we will go to Mars. Uh, and logically, the goal on Mars is just to do exactly what was done on the Moon, except we do not have Kennedy to sign our proposal. So therefore, we have to do the regular process, you know. Uh, that process took us a lot of time, uh, and uh, together with the PI of the mission, uh, Bruce Bannert, we started to work on this uh, project something like 20 years ago. So we made uh, many, many proposals, you know. And uh, finally, uh, four years ago, we were selected by NASA to do the mission. So this is another idea. Of course, when you see this, uh, you know, uh, nice story of space mission, you have the feeling that it is beautiful even when, you know, you run into trouble. But you really need to convince uh, your agencies uh, to do it. And you know, this is all the history of uh, seismologists uh, uh, who wanted to go to the moon. Uh, we started, and I started, by the way, at that time, you know, and for sure, you know, nothing is there because I was not already there, but for sure something was there, you know, uh, leading to Viking. So Viking was 40 years ago. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of effort were made. You know, sometimes a mission was launched, like Mars 96, but the mission was uh, launched and lost in Earth's orbit. Uh, sometimes the mission was selected but was stopped uh, by the space agencies. And at the end, you know, uh, InSight was selected in 2011. So what do we know uh, regarding Quake on Mars? So we made one attempt uh, in 76. Uh, this was a seismometer on the Viking spacecraft. The seismometer is there, Mars is there, and you see there is something wrong with this picture because you would like to put the seismometer there, not on the deck of the lander, but it was on the deck of the lander because no robotic arm was there to put it on the ground. So this was one of the problems, and at the end, you know, the Viking lander was able to... to was moving with the wind, and the seismometer was detecting very nicely the wind through the movement of the Viking lander. So after that, you know, we, we made the Mars 96 mission with two seismometers, so I was already starting to work in that field, you know, at that time. Uh, and this was lost uh, just after launch, and then inside came. Okay. So selection was made in uh, 11, you know, uh, in a two ways. So first we were selected against 30 projects, NASA pick up three projects. Then we were selected uh, uh, among the competition within the last three projects. The original launch date was supposed to be uh, last month. Um, and because I am here, it means that there is uh, some problem. And indeed, we, we, got, we got some issues, you know, uh, on the development of the hardware. I will tell you that later. But uh, finally, we were uh, lucky enough to be... Uh, uh, so our launch was canceled uh, uh, last December, and uh, the launch was reconfirmed for... Okay, uh, not March 9, of course, so this is a copy. The launch will be in May uh, 2018, but uh, March 9, 2016 was the date for the launch confirmation of 18. Okay, so it will be a very fast trajectory to Mars in 18. You know, something like six months uh, 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 launch from Vandenberg, arriving on Mars uh, uh, in November, and then it will be one Martian year of operation. So the payload is very simple. It is nothing more than more or less what was made on the moon with Apollo. So we have a seismometer. We have a heat flow measurement, as on the moon. We have a magnetometer located there. We have a geodesy experiment. On the moon, it was a, a, a mirror on which you, 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 um, you shoot uh, with a laser from the Earth. Of course, you cannot shoot uh, with a laser from, Mars, uh, from the Earth to Mars. So we, have, we are using a radio system, but it's basically the same idea. Uh, and then we have an astronaut, so something uh, 
able to deploy our seismometer, and this is a deployment system, a robotic arm. So the goal of the mission is to deploy uh, instrument on the surface of the planet. And uh, so as you see, it is very easy. So this is what was done on the moon. If you can put the sound, please. No. Yes. OK. OK, anyway, if you, OK, so if you don't have the sound, you will not hear what uh, Houston was listening. OK, so. OK, so you, you first need to pick up the instrument, you know, with a tool. And after, when you get it, you have to deploy it and to put it on the ground. It's very simple. Huh? Uh, but as you will see, it is not as simple as it looks. So we are still on the way to catch the instrument with a tool. <clears throat> OK, now it's go. And now we have to deploy it. We have always to take care to the cable. Because you know, if you break the cable, <laughs> there is some problem. OK, and of course, this guy were trained you know, a lot uh, before. But it's very important to know that this guy is a geologist. You know, it is the last and the first. It is the last astronaut and the first geologist on uh, the Apollo. Uh, so Harrison Schmidt. And then, you know, when this is done, you have to put the instrument on the ground. So this is what we will do with the robotic arm. OK, so of course, this is a movie. Uh, so therefore, we will pick up the seismometer, you know, with a tool. We will put it on the ground. We have to take care of the cable, etc., etc. And after that, one of the big differences is on Mars, uh, you have wind, you have large temperature variation, so therefore we have to protect the seismometer. On the Earth, this is something you do with a, you do with a seismic vault. On Mars, of course, you will do that with your own uh, uh, seismic vault, uh, which is on the deck. And you see, we will take it here and we will put it on the ground in order to protect the instrument. So, because I have only uh, 30 minutes to finish, I will stop the movie here. Uh, okay, I was very f lucky because this in the real life will take uh, one month. Because every time, you know, you have to prepare the, the command, you have to check it, you have to make picture, etc., etc. And you have meetings where you will review all the commands. You will have to decide on the, on the way to proceed. Uh, and at the end, this will be our uh, time uh, at uh, GPL in Pasadena from uh, November until the end of uh, the year in, in 18. And then you know, this is uh, uh, the heat flow experiment. And of course, you can imagine that uh, myself and the PI of the heat flow experiment uh, will have to decide together where we go because we probably will both have the same preferred location to put our instrument. Anyway, so this is a movie of the instrument and of the lander uh, in Denver. So you see the size of the lander, you see the solar panel, this is a seismometer before the deployment and this is uh, uh, the windshield of it, and you see it is a very small uh, lander, something like uh, 350 kilograms uh, in uh, total mass uh, with uh, big solar panels uh, in order to provide the power during the two years of operation. So the payload again is here, uh, and I will uh, uh, show you uh, additional pictures. So this is a lander, you know, with uh, the, uh, the heat shield. Uh, and uh, because you see all this picture, you can imagine that to decide to, to postpone the mission was really a painful decision because everything was uh, ready except uh, the, you know, some issue with uh, uh, the, the seismometer of the mission. 
Okay, so the seismometer is located there, uh, and here you have the electronics. So you have a, a, a pendulum, you know, to detect uh, the, uh, the seismic wave, both at long period, at short period. So these are uh, made by uh, the French Space Agency together with IPGP. This is made by the Imperial College in London. This is made by uh, the Max Planck uh, Institute in Germany. So this electronic is made by ETH in Zurich. Uh, this is made by uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and the uh, management of the mission is also made by CNES. So this is a very international uh, collaboration. And here you have uh, uh, the uh, windshield uh, to protect uh, the seismometer. Okay, so here you have uh, details of the pendulum. Uh, so we have three axes inside, and these are uh, a radio, you know, it's a radio of uh, the instrument where you see all the detail which is used, you know, to, uh, uh, to check that everything is okay. Uh, and you, you see that we go through uh, the pendulum through uh, uh, some, some type of uh, scanner. Uh, you have to, to, to imagine that this is made in titanium, so it's a very powerful scanner in order to, to have that process made. Uh, and of course, you know, emissions are a lot of challenge. So we had to build the mission in three years uh, from, uh, you know, the date of the selection, and it was a lot of challenge, you know. Of course, we have... Uh, okay, I have movies. So we have we had challenge in the deployment. You remember the movie, everything is perfect. So this is one test, you know, of deployment. And you will see that uh, here we have some issue uh, with, uh, you know, uh, a scratch here, uh, Velcro, in fact. So we use Velcro in order to, to put the cable on the spacecraft. And of course, the problem is that you, you, you need to take out the Velcro. And uh, you see it's not so easy. So. <laughs> At the end, we succeed, <laughs> okay. So we had uh, some uh, issue with the rigidity of the cable. You know, this was not predicted. Every time you have to, to redo the test, to check everything, to, to make modification. And at the end, uh, we had uh, uh, an issue with a leak on uh, uh, the VBB sphere. And this was uh, for us the reason for uh, the, the launch uh, cancellation and then launch, launch uh, uh, sleep to 18. So, why we had this issue? The big problem is that we go on a planet where we have very large temperature variation. So, and uh, in order to protect the instrument from this temperature variation, we need to have the seismometer in vacuum. So, therefore, we put the seismometer in a sphere, you know, and we had at the end small leak. Uh, and the big problem is that what we know is that when we have this leak, you know, we lose a lot of uh, the thermal property, the thermal protection of the, of the instrument. You know that uh, you are maybe using uh, DWAR. You know that DWAR is a very efficient way, you know, to, to, to protect uh, uh, from uh, thermal dissipation. You know, this is something we use, uh, you know, to keep uh, uh, stuff very cold. And it, in some way, it was the same idea. The leak is very small. In fact, if you compute the leak, you know, uh, in fact, the leak rate is such that if you take your tie, you know, uh, you will lose 5% of the pressure in uh, uh, 300 years. So in some way, you know, you have very good tie, you know. Uh, you don't need to go to the, to fix it. But we had to fix that. Uh, and uh, we failed to repair it, and at the end, you know, we decided to shift in 18. And uh, we need that because we go in a place where it is very, very uh, difficult to make seismology. Uh, you know, seismologists want to put their seismometer in place like this, so what we call seismic vault, something where we have no temperature variation, we have no wind, we have no... Uh, nothing which is moving the instrument. In our case, we go on a planet where we have uh, 
80 degrees of temperature variation between day and night. We have wind up to 20 meters per second. We are on the surface. We have dust devil. We have dust, you know, impacting the instrument. Not as much as uh, in the movie, uh, you know, uh, a man on Mars. But nevertheless, you know, it is not really the place where you will put an instrument without any protection. And um, this is one way to, to compare. Of course, this is a little bit technical. So, but I will try to explain you the, the challenge. You have two planets here, okay? And uh, so this is the noise you record on one of the planets in a seismic vault. So, of course, it is the Earth. Uh, and you see that the noise is relatively large. You have a lot of seismic noise here, and this is related to the wave as uh, generated by the oceanic tide. You have a lower noise here, uh, and this line, you know, the red line and the blue line are the noise we want to have on Mars. So you see that uh, our goal on Mars is better than what you get on the Earth with a seismic vault. So it's not easy. On the other end, this is another planet. This is again our goal, you know, and these are the noise recorded by the instrument. This is the moon with Apollo. And why on the moon it is easy and why on the Earth it is difficult just because on the moon you have no ocean, you have no atmosphere. On the Earth you have the atmosphere, you have the ocean. And Mars will be somewhere in between the two, you know, so which means it will not be so easy even if we can do it. So therefore, this is why we are protecting a lot the instruments. The, the instruments, the VBB, are located in a sphere, which will be in vacuum. Then uh, we protect it uh, from the wind, you know. We seal uh, the windshield with a skirt, you know. Uh, and this will be the first time that we send chain mail on Mars. And the chain mail is used, you know, to seal uh, the skirt uh, with respect to the rocks. On the top of the sphere, we have a thermal shield. And then, of course, you know, we have other devices, including a sun dial in order to see uh, and to measure the direction of the instrument. So it will be really protected by a lot of uh, uh, cocoon or, you know, uh, in order to have very low temperature variation. And at the end, we believe that uh, we will be able to get uh, this very high precision. So this is something you have here. So this will be the sensitivity of the displacement of the instrument in terms of uh, displacement. So this is one millimeter, and this is uh, one uh, femto, uh, picometer, 10 minus 12 meter. Uh, and you see that we will uh, be able to detect something like 10 picometer of uh, ground displacement. And in order to give you uh, some idea on 10 picometer, so this is an atom of uh, helium. Uh, so this is one angstrom and 10, 20 picometer, which is this resolution, is about that size compared to the atom. So you see it will be a very, very small uh, uh, displacement in terms of sensitivity. Uh, which means that uh, because of that, we hope we will be quite good in terms of detecting quake far away. But of course, we need to protect the instrument from a lot of stuff. And now we can go to uh, science, what we will try to do. So we will try first to detect uh, everything which is generating wave on the planet. So we will have quake. Don't ask me, are you sure we will get quake? Okay, we don't know. So it's the first time we will detect a quake. So we have theoretical model. This model suggests that we will have quake. Uh, we compare this model with respect to the moon. We compare this model with respect to the Earth. We believe in the model, but because we have no data, these are only models. Then we have impact. So impact is something we know a little bit better. We know that we have the atmosphere, we know that we have the Phobos tide, and all these guys, you know, will generate wave or will generate deformation of the planet. So the impact, we expect to have something like five per year. Uh, so this is an example of impact detected on the moon. It, was, uh, it is an impact located there, you know, which was detected up to 1,000 kilometers away by the uh, the, the Apollo seismometer, and uh, this was an artificial impact, 
you know, of that size, something like 15 meter, but these are typically the size of the big crater you can get on Mars, uh, and therefore we'll be also able to detect this type of event uh, on the planet. Impact will be very interesting because we will be able first to detect the signal, then to get the direction, and then we will request one of the orbiter, an orbiter on Mars, to take picture in order to, to see where is the impact. And this is something you, 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 you see on this picture. You know, this is a picture before the impact, and this is a picture after the impact. So therefore, you see the new crater, and because you, you see the new crater, you know exactly where is the location, and because you know this location, you have the distance between the seismic source and the seismometer, and you can do all the processing. So, second stuff will be, uh, I guess, three minutes, something like that. Yes. Second stuff will be the atmospheric uh, noise. Uh, we know that uh, uh, the atmosphere will make a lot of noise. Uh, so this is why we have... Uh, uh, okay, this is why we have pressure sensor, we have wind sensor, we have magnetometer, etc. And uh, we believe that, uh, okay, yes. Okay, sorry. Okay, we believe that this will generate some uh, brazing of the planet in terms of uh, seismic wave. But I skip on that. What will be very interesting is that we also believe that we will be able to detect what we call the dust devil. So dust devil, you know, are this type of very small uh, tornadoes. This is something you get also on the Earth. And it's turned out that these dust devils are, again, you know, something like a seismic source. They generate a wave, and this wave travel, you know, on the planet. This was detected on the Earth. We are able to detect them, to use them in, in order to get information on the ground. And uh, I will finish with the quake. So we will send only one station on the planet. And you know one of the difficulty will be to get uh, the location and to measure the velocity. So seismology is a way to, to use the seismic wave velocity. And in order to use the seismic wave velocity, you need to measure the seismic wave velocity. If you measure an arrival time, and if you don't know the, the time of the source, okay, there is some problem. When you get an impact, you know the distance. But when you have a quake, you don't, you don't know for sure the distance because you have to know where is the quake. And uh, the idea uh, will be to use a wave turning around the planet. So if we have a quake, you know, we'll get a first wave, you know, uh, coming from this location, reaching the station. Then we have a second wave here, you know, taking the opposite direction around the planet. And then after that, you know, nothing requests this wave to stop to propagate. So this, this means that this wave, you know, will turn a full turn around the planet and will come again at the location. So it will come again. And this here is a wave, you know, after one full turn around the planet. And this is very important. Why? Because imagine that you are in a, you know, uh, you are uh, uh, in, in, in a stadium. So, and uh, there is a, a, a run, there is a, you know, a competition. So you don't get uh, the starter. You just see one guy, you know, running on the st stadium. But you know the length of the stadium. So you get that guy, you know, you take your, your clock, then uh, you wait for him. After one turn, you take, the, the, you, you take your clock, and then you get the speed of the guy. Exactly what we will do on Mars between this guy and this guy, who is the same, you know, and then it will give us the velocity, and from the velocity, it will give us the structure. So last, before to conclude, uh, will be uh, the Phobos tide. So Phobos is also generating a small tide. It will be a very uh, thin signal of the order of fraction of millimeter, but also we know the frequency and we will be able to detect it. So I would like now to conclude uh, just by a very important message. So in this mission, we want to broadcast uh, the data to the school and to the uh, college, high school. 
uh, and therefore we will associate what, what we call the sismo at l'école in French, sismo at school in UK, uh, and you can use any language, you know, a sismometer in the schuler, etc., etc. Uh, and uh, all this data will be sent to all the school uh, in order to play with the data. And this will not be sent, you know, two or three years after the mission, but it will be sent just a few days after this data will be given to the scientific community. Of course, the, the project team will have the data a little bit in advance, but when we will broadcast the data to uh, the scientific community, the school will get the data at the same time. And uh, these are a lot of ideas. You know, I will not detail, but basically we want to associate this school to uh, many of the activities. We want to send the data to the school when I say school, high school, college, etc., uh, we want to give uh, the tool for the student, you know, to, to do seismology with this data. And uh, if you want to participate, just contact Jean-Luc here, you know, uh, and I am sure he will be able to, to put you in the loop for the mission. Thank you.